Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Breeze, Breezeway Productions' The Breeze, where we bring you the latest in independent films and film festival news, and we continue our coverage of this year's Tribeca Film Festival, the 2022 edition, and we have a filmmaker here uh, with us to talk about Angel-Headed Hipster, the songs of Mark Bolin and T-Rex, so thank you for joining me, Ethan Silverman. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Nice to be here. Nice to meet you as well, and uh, happy that you came on to the show to talk about your film playing at the festival this year called Angel-Headed Hipster, The Songs of Mark Bolin and T-Rex. So tell us a little bit about it. Uh, it's a documentary, and mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's an interesting documentary because it's hard to categorize. It is not a traditional music biopic, and it is not a making of. It is kind of a hybrid of trying to bring Mark Boland's music to life, both by uh, you know, telling his story, how he worked, what his creative process was, and what he achieved. And we were making an album a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and I filmed a lot of the making of the album. And the idea is bringing the living artist of all ages to, um, to interpret his music. Okay. Uh, how did you end up teaming up with uh, your producer on the film, uh, Bill Kerbishley, to make this happen? Well, Bill Kerbishley is a friend, has been a friend for over 25 years. I was, my background is really in theater, and I had developed a couple of theater projects with Pete Townsend from The Who, and Bill is Pete and The Who's manager. Oh. And that's how we met. And while those projects never happened, I put a lot of time and work into them, was of course thrilled to be working with a musical genius like Pete Townsend. And oh. I just met Bill that way. And then a number of years later, he approached me about working on a theater project. Uh -huh. And he wanted to use music from bands from the 70s, from the British scene. And to mix it up, but for me to come up with a story and he wanted it to be a contemporary story, et cetera, et cetera. And I was so flattered. Uh, and one of the things he said to me, he says, do you know the music of T-Rex, of Mark Bolin? And I said, well, I know Bang a Gong, like every mm -hmm. other American. And he said, no, you don't understand. There's like a major catalog there. You should take a listen to it. And so in two or three weeks now with you know, Spotify and Apple and everything else. I think I listened to every song I could find over a two week period. Wow. And I became obsessed and I didn't understand why in America we didn't really know T-Rex that well. Sure. It was the second banana in our kind of uh, reductive way that we look at music of David Bowie. And then I realized that wasn't the case at all. He was not only a major figure in England in the 70s, he was a pioneer. And he also, as I listened to the song, so I really my way in was the, were the songs. And when I listened to the songs, I heard everything. I heard everything that I've been hearing in music for the past, for my whole life. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand why the world did not know more about him. It was my own ignorance that led me down this path. And I became more and more obsessed over time. I wrote the musical, we never got around to doing it. And one day I said to Bill, what about doing an album? And getting some newer people and people that he knew maybe to cover the songs. And he said, Ethan, it's a great idea, but the music, no one's gonna pay for it. So then a week later I called back and I said, how about if I filmed this? Okay. And he said, okay, now I think I could get it some money for us. And that's really how it happened. Nice. So then, there's like the filming of the creation of the album, so to say. So it's mm -hmm. like a behind the scenes in the studio recording, uh, you know, uh, doing the tracks and all this, the work and things like that. That's kind of the, the style of your doc. Well, that's what it started as. And then I knew I had to put some archival material in to, really show the context and help an audience understand who Mark Bolin was. And then when we started going through the archival, I was and I blown away again because it was yeah. just, how can I say this diplomatically? I don't think anybody compares to Mark Bolin. The way Oof, they that, that's a, that's a statement. 
That is a statement. But I, mean, I see. I can say it because yeah. it's true. You will see it when you see the film. It's yeah. extraordinary. And I think the artist would agree. He had something other people. He was a true original. And there's very few people you can say that about. Yeah. And um, listen, I love the artist that did the film. Are you crazy? They're wonderful. But seeing these performances which were mostly shot by Ringo Starr he made a film in 1972 called Born to Boogie and they were very close friends and Ringo had all this incredible footage and so that was my gateway and then of course I started looking at old interviews and stuff like that so you had quite the cast, obviously, besides Bolin, you had Gloria Jones. Uh, Ringo is is in it with the archival footage. Nick no, Cave. Ringo, I interviewed Ringo as well. Oh, so you have Ringo as well sitting down talking about it, plus the archival footage. So mm -hmm. you, you have one of the Beatles saying, is he saying the, the tremendous uh, praise as you do for his yes. work? Yes. Well, that's, that's and, some good validation there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Nick I have Cave, a, yeah. I have Elton John saying it. I have David Bowie saying it. That's archival because unfortunately, David had passed away right when, right before we were starting the project. Yeah. So his so, footage is archival, but uh, still wonderful. Yeah, you still have everyone, including Joan Jett, who who talks the praise of that's our of this footage. Position. Oh yeah. So you went around and that you talked with everybody to showcase. Uh, the songs of Mark Bolin and T-Rex, which uh, is going to be playing at Tribeca this year. You are screening uh, Friday, June 10th at 8 at the mm -hmm. Indeed Theater, Saturday, June 11th at 9 at the Sinopolis Theater 6, and mm -hmm. Sat Sunday, June 19th at 9 at the Village East Angelica. So three times to be able to check this film out. Uh, yeah. Where can people go to find out more about the film? Is there a social media, a website? Uh, yeah, it will, well, the first thing is to go get your tickets at the Tribeca Film Festival. The link, the link will be below. Great, yes. <laughs> and uh, that's and this has never this has been seen by about five people. My editors, right. sound designer, color graders, my wife, Bill. Very few people have seen this world so premiere. Really yeah, it's a world premiere. So the, the first time the world will be able to get eyes on this and you have quite a stellar uh, cast of musicians that were able to talk about Mark Bolin and T-Rex and to bring them to the forefront in today's music world. I read an article earlier today that the best music festival in New York is a film festival, which is Tribeca. And Tribeca has a lot of music that's really coming out this year that people can go and listen to, to artists that are gonna be performing and as well as watching documentaries and films about artists as well. So this film will definitely fall in that category if you're a music enthusiast. Yep. Uh, so we, we'd like our audiences to check out Angel Headed Hipster, the songs of Mark Bolin and T-Rex. And also it's cool to see the poster uh, in the background of your Zoom, which I which you told me is the, the first time that you that's ever been seen. So yeah. th it's pretty rad. I, I like the style. It's very colorful. It's very rock and roll. <laughs> he's playing, I, his, I, I he's playing his guitar with his tambourine, which was a which was a signature move of his. It's and pretty rad. Yeah, I'm sorry. You were going to ask me about Nick Cave. I, I, yeah. yeah, I saw that he was included as well as one of the testimonials that you put. So I was, I was more curious than that. his response. More yep. than that. Nick Cave gives an extraordinary performance of Cosmic Dancer that he has now put into his own live act since doing our film. We recorded him. He's on the album doing Cosmic Dancer that Hal Wilner produced. He was a great friend of Hal Wilner who we lost in early days of COVID, uh, the record producer. And Nick not only speaks about his love for Mark Bowen and his music, he it's an extraordinary recording that he performs. Uh, and it's really special. Took a page from his book. I've, I've seen him live and he's pretty awesome to watch. So yeah, obviously and, inspired by the greats. Hey, He's yeah. like, we're very lucky. He was the first person we recorded on this project. And because of Nick Cave, I have to give a special shout out to him because of him and the work he did on this song for this album and film, 
is the reason we got everybody else. Because how the producer would play the unmixed track and people would say, I'm in. So we are Nick Cave, everything. I mean, he's, what, he, what's the name of the song for the movie? That he sings, Cosmic yes. Dancer. Called Cosmic Dancer. It's on YouTube. We released it as a single. There's the video I made, but there's also a version that he does live. That's his own, that as well. Uh, so he is our great friend to Mark Bolin, Hal Wilner, and this project. Awesome. Well, Very we will also guy. share that. We'll share that below as well so people can check out that uh, that song from Nick Cave. And we hope our audience is able to check out, once again, Angel Headed Hipster, the songs of Mark Bolin and T-Rex. And I want to thank you for joining me today, Ethan Silverman, director and screenwriter. So thank you so uh, much. For this film. This is great. And I uh, hope you have a, a great time speaking with the other journalists covering Tribeca. I hope so, too. I hope so, too. I'm very proud of this project. As well, you should be. Congratulations on the world premiere. Thank you.